Tori, you're going to turn around and you're going to go into the dollhouse. And as soon as you pass through the doorway, things suddenly get very dark and black. And then little by little, your eyes start to adjust and things start to clear up. Um, at first, very fuzzy, but then it goes from being really dark to really, really bright. And to your surprise, you can feel this sensation of one or two people holding you by the arms and holding you down up against a very cold wall. And you're like, what? Who is that? What's going on? And you're, you're afraid that it might be that creature thing again. But it's different. And you're not sure if that's a good thing or not. And then you start to, as your vision adjusts, you actually see people hovering over you. People dressed all in white, in these white outfits and uniforms. And there's this woman who's finally coming into view. She's kneeling next to you as these, as you can feel this, this shot going into your arm, like right into the vein of your arm, of nice pinch. And as she, the vision of the woman comes into view, she, she's wearing a nurse's outfit. And to your surprise, it's your stepmother. And your stepmother looks at you and says, can you hear me? Do, do you know where you are, sweetheart? What's going on? You're looking around and you're in this strange looking, very cold room, very cold looking room, not necessarily temperature cold, but just cold looking. And there's like padded walls all over the place. And you can see off to your peripheral vision that there is this bed with restraints on it. Um, and for a faint moment, you catch a whiff of black licorice, just a small faint of black licorice. And you can't help but feel like, that smells so familiar, you don't know why. And the nurse, the nurse who looks like your stepmother says, you had another attack. It's time for your drugs. Calm down. What attack? Why do I have to take drugs? Carmen, Carmen. And suddenly you see another person kneeling down before you in a doctor's outfit. And he says, Carmen, do you remember me? My name is Dr. Theodore. Carmen? I, I'm Tori. He sighs a little bit. Listen to me very carefully. You're in a mental institution. You've been here for the last three years. The reason you're here is because you're sick, Carmen. But it's okay. We're here to help. We're here to make you feel better. To make you feel healthy again. No, 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 no. Carmen's my sister. The, I'm not Carmen. Carmen, sweetheart? And then from behind the doctor, you see your mom, your biological mom, and your dad. And your dad is like, has his arm around your mom, and your mom is holding on to your dad's hand. And your mom suddenly says, Oh, sweetheart, oh baby, you're really here. Carmen, we thought we lost you. And your dad says, Carmen, we missed you very much, sweetie. You seem to be getting better. She seems to be more lucid, Doctor. Carmen, you remember us, right? I'm your mother, and this is your father. Yeah, you're my parents, but I'm not Carmen. <laughs> I'm Tori. Sweetheart, Tori doesn't exist, okay? There is no Tori. Tori isn't real. You need to let her go. Guys are crazy. <laughs> are you? What are you? Yeah, you're I guess like she's trying away? to pull away, get out. I don't. She's held yeah. back, right? So she's trying you're, to like. She's held away. back. So you're just gonna struggle and pull away, and and as you're you know struggling to pull away, um, you can see the your mother like it's like her heart is broken, and she's like, 
oh, my poor girl. And she looks so upset and so distraught that this is happening. And the, uh, the doctors are like trying to, again, push you down. And you can see one of them like taking another syringe and putting in more of some substance. And then as they're like forcing you down, they'll shoot you up again. And you can feel the pain. And as soon as you feel the pain, you find yourself out on the doorstop, the, the front doorstep of your dollhouse again. And you're right in front of everybody in the TV screen. Meanwhile, while this is all happening, back at the other side of the TV screen, uh, are you all just hanging out in that room, just waiting for Tori to come back? So we do we see that exchange, or we just see her go into the? We just see her go in. You just see her go right. in. Okay. And she's she'll be in there for a little bit. Got it. So while that's all happening, you all are. Are you just going to stick around and wait for her? Or are you going to be doing something else? What are you going to do? Definitely doing something else. Did we pass any place that had like a shower? Not in this wing, but if you found a way, you mean if you want, you want to explore or you want to find a way to find a place with a shower? Yes. You could try to find a way. Um, I will also point out that the TV screen thing is yay big. Okay, so it's portable just as an fyi okay. out of character because black powder wouldn't know what this is but is it battery powered or is it plugged in it's plugged in but there's no power to the building but there's no power to the building but don't unplug it because it may need to be plugged in even though it's not getting power um sam i know you don't have your glasses and maybe that's affecting your iq at this point but there's no lights in these buildings, so no shade, but I think we can just take the box because I think this is some kind of weird dark magic. Magic makes a lot of sense. And I don't take it as a hit to IQ because 67% of people with any substantially rated IQ can be easily outdone on an IQ scale. However, evil can't be scientifically defined. It's an illusory moral concept that doesn't exist in nature. Its origins and connotations have been inexorably linked to religion and mythology, not science. Oh, so you, what, you don't believe in evil? Well, it just can't be scientifically defined. Bro, nothing about this is scientific in any way, shape, or form. And he's just like looking at you like, what? Like, Sam, could any of what's happened be defined scientifically? Anything. Well, you'd be surprised how many killers do what they do because of their parents. That could go very much into parental nurturing studies. I figured that much, but... I meant, like, the library, for example. No comment on that at this point, but... I, I want to take the box with us just so we can keep an eye on Tori, but I also don't want to risk losing her. Yeah. Yeah, like, a part of her is alive, man. Like, her spirit is still alive. And it's now trapped in this TV. I'm wondering if... Like, trying to put the rules of my world into this one, and I won't be alert, but it just doesn't work. Frank, he's going to peer out the door towards the direction of where they barred the door. Is, is there any sounds, or do we see a bad guy coming? Yeah, roll a perception hearing, or seeing, oh or both. You can do both. Okay. I'll do them separately, I guess. I'll do hearing. Uh, but I'm not vision for sure. Oh, I hear. I, I have a six. Finally, those pixie ears are doing something. You, you are listening, intently, Star, and you hear the heavy footsteps down the hallway. It sounds like it's around the area where the uh, hallway forked into three different wings. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can hear the pause and then you'll hear the footsteps pick up again as it starts to move. Not down this hallway though, mm -hmm. but somewhere else. Um, as for Frankie, you will visually see 
uh, uh, this large shadowy figure moving. Um, but it's so, it's still really dark, um, that you can't, with an 8 out of 14, um, that you're not really sure what direction it's going, but you're positive it's not coming in your wing. Okay. I go back in, and I'm like... And Sarth, like, like, pointing at his ears, like, I can hear it. Are we in a room right now, or in a yes. uh, hallway? Yes. Yeah. As far as I know, you're still in the room where you found the TV okay. set, as far as I know. Yeah. Let's bar this door and try and hunker down here, I think. I think if we try to move, that thing will beeline right at us, after us. The room that we're in, are there any closets, windows, any other ventilation? There's no closets. Um, I'm sorry, there's no windows. I wouldn't say that there's a closet either. In terms of ventilation, no, I don't think there's any like way that you can, like, there's no other like entrance except for the door, the bar door. This would be it. We would either trap ourselves in if we try to do this. Hey, can't just keep running from this thing. Sorry, but. Or we can trap it. You can try, or... I mean, has anyone tried hurting it? This is the first time Sam and I have dealt with it. Well, Frankie blew him up with the big axe thingy and the black powder. Oh, you were there! But you were actually, like, actual black powder, so maybe you weren't actually there. I, I was were there you... in spirit. Yeah! <laughs> right, you weren't there, but black powder was there, so... We had to blow it up. Did it do anything to it? I'm just trying to remember, does it did it charred him some? Can't remember if we saw that. I think it knocked him off his feet. But he's still alive, so it only did so much. If it did if it did did anything at all, it was minimal. But if we can at least trap him and lock him in somewhere. Okay, well, grab the TV and see if we still have a picture for keeping track of Tori. Okay. So Star will uh, pick up the... T is there like a handle on top of the TV? Like those old-fashioned um, ones? Uh, if it's old, yeah. If the old-fashioned ones would have a handle, I'll say yes. Okay. I'll say yes. So Star will lift it up and unplug the TV. Like, but pinch of the dice. I'm so sorry, Tori. <laughs> he, like, um, You'll unplug it, and then the TV turns off. Plug it back in. Oh, it was, so it was plugged in? It was plugged in. Okay, so I we'll didn't start. check it, but I was curious. Alright, plug it back in, and hopefully we'll get her back. <laughs> he plugs it back in immediately. You'll plug it back in, and then it'll go for a few seconds, mm -hmm. and then you'll see the dollhouse again. But Tori's not there. Not back yet. In addition to that, Star, you will also hear the sound of bells jingling again down the hallway where the three-way cross happened. It's in that direction where the big guy just was. Just as an FYI. Oh. And it looks like the jingling is now moving further away from you. Guys, I'm hearing bells and it's going further in the dark corner and the bells led us to tori before so should we go after the bells although big dude is there not that all was of the us. Whole thing that was moving frankie you saw it oh uh, yeah bro like big and that's why i just want to trap him somewhere um, I mean, I can be the bait if we want to do something savvy and trick them and lock them in somewhere. I'm, I just, a, I'm pretty worry. fast. I can outrun. I just attention. worry about trying to trap him in. He seems pretty proficient at breaking things down. 
Right, so we have to find a way to really chain him down. If you and Reggie nah, can get him trapped in a different room, Star and I can stay here for when Tori gets back. Mm -hmm. That could work. Star's going to reach into his pocket and he's going to hand you the syringe and the, um, anisep the antiseptic to make you drowsy. And you said it was out of character. You said it was three enough to take down a regular sized person, yeah? Yeah, three regular sized person doses. Oh, three regular sized person doses. I like you. Okay, so he's gonna be like, bro, there's three of these and a syringe. Maybe you could knock him out for a little while? Oh, yeah, bro, let's do that. Will all three fit into the syringe, or do we need three separate syringes? You would probably need three separate syringes. Also, if anyone wants to make a medicine or first aid roll right now, go ahead and okay. roll. Please, if anyone wants to make a roll. I will do this. Love it when the DM says, please somebody make a roll. <laughs> okay, I got a 9 out of 16. Star, Star you believe that for some th creature that massive, you probably will need all three. And pray <laughs> that it works. <laughs> well, Star's gonna be Star's like, we're gonna need all three, but we're gonna need two more syringes, and we're gonna have to move fast if we're gonna take it down. Well, they're both fast. We there were there were other syringes back in the room, weren't there? With Tori's mm -hmm. body. I, I mean, I can go get them. You gotta stay think... together. We'll stay together, Frankie. I think I might have an idea. But we'll have to go get those syringes first. I, I was going to say, I think then that's the plan. Frankie and Black Powder will break away, go back to where they were, get the syringes, and come back. Uh, Frankie and Black Powder, you're going to make your way back over to the um, medical ward area, and you're specifically just looking for another two more syringes? Yeah. Okay. All right, when you arrive back, uh, go ahead and roll me some search or spot checks. Nine percent, okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna say that, Frankie, you'll be able to find the syringes that you need. For Sam, uh, I guess Star is just kind of hanging out, so. We're just gonna say that uh, this is when Tori, it's because you did you you plug the TV back in. Tori, you're gonna finally come back uh, to the front door of the dollhouse, having just witnessed what I just described to you before. Yeah. And you see that Sam and Star are there, but you don't see Frank here, Black Powder. Um, she'll probably be clutching the arm where she got the shot. <laughs> uh and look very confused, um, but she'll um, look at the screen and see Sam and Star there and ask, um, where are the others? They just went to get something. They'll be back here as quick as they can. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you find a TV? No. No, I didn't find anything like that. Um, I, I look like Tori to you guys, right? Like, I look like me. Yeah, you're you. Yeah. You have your dolls? Yeah, yeah, I still have my dolls. I was <laughs> in, like, a... I was in a strange room, and I actually saw my my stepmom and my dad and my my biological mom too and they called me they called me Carmen your sister's name are you it, two no um but they said that Tori doesn't exist but you're right here. That's, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 
Tori, you in that moment look around in the room that everybody's in and you realize this is the same room. This room that you just saw yourself in is this exact same one that they're in right now. Guys, I was just in that room. When I went into the house, it's like I transported into that room. Here? Yeah, but it was it wasn't as dark as it is now. It was really bright and there were a bunch of doctors and my family in there. Stress can lead to a lot of different challenging ideas. So you weren't right here. And if you had been, Star and I would have been here to help. So it really, it, it looked just like this room I, like the resemblance is uncanny it, it, it's this room do you think it was a vision maybe <clears throat> or maybe maybe that was reality and this is not I, I don't know you guys I'm a, I don't know what to believe right now Tori, you're still Tori. I know you as Tori, because I'm still Star with two R's, right? Yes. Well, then that's all that matters. What's most important is that that might be a clue to where your sister is. Have you considered that? Maybe. <sighs> it's possible that Maybe your parents have Capgras syndrome. It's what? a del- del- disorder in which one believes their friends or family members have been replaced by imposters. Maybe they're sick. I think they are, yeah. <laughs> it can't be me. I'm not sick. Well, of course not. You, d- you guys... Yeah, you guys don't think I'm sick, right? No. No. Right. Yeah, so it's 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 them. So I just got to convince them. How do I convince them? They they keep shooting me up with drugs. And I come back here. Hmm. Did they say anything significant while you were in there? Like anything that may have some no meeting. They just said I had to let Tori go. Does Maldivere Manor mean anything to you? Yeah, that's the that's the house that my sister and I went to right before I lost her. That's where you stabbed the doll and got your magic. Yeah. Did that house look anything or have any rooms similar to this room that we're in? No. It looks like a big house. It, it, that room I was in looks like a, a mental hospital. Well, we're in a mental hospital. And you're saying that the mansion you lost your sister is the same as this asylum? Out of character, no, I was, I was, sorry, that was misleading. Um, I was saying it looked like a big house um, where I went with my sister and um, the room I was just in looked nothing like the manor. Apologies. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Um, so Star just looks really confused and is like, What's important now is that we have you and we need to figure out how to get you out of the TV. And don't panic. I did unplug the TV. It turned off, but I plugged it back in and you're here. So there's that. He gives you like a half-hearted smile. Great, don't do that again, please. 
No. Frankie and Black Powder. At this point, you are making your way back to the room. I would like for both of you to roll a perception seeing and or hearing. You can do both if you'd like. Let me know who succeeds. I failed. Badly. I critical failed. Oh. The vision. I got three sixes. Oh, wow. Okay. So basically, you see just down the hallway to around the area where the three path thing was, you see this figure um, stumbling um, into that three-way branch, uh, and then the figure pauses for a moment, and then makes its way straight ahead down the middle branch. But you couldn't tell who that figure was. Um, as for Black Powder, the, you critically failed your perception. Um, I mean, there isn't really anything to critically fail for, so I'm just going to let it pass. There's okay. nothing really. <laughs> I, you just... You just... Oh, well, I guess what I would say is, is you'll see... Hmm, you'll probably be seeing things. And let's say you see... You, you see you see some sort of horrific imagery. I'll let you decide what that horrific imagery is. And it's just like your mind playing tricks on you, or at least you think it's your mind playing tricks on you. And it's sort of like gives you a bit of the shudders or stirs you up a bit, which basically means that you're, for the next, I will say in-game, 15 minutes in-game, you'll get a minus two penalty in your rolls because you're just so shooken up. Um, what would be an example of something that would be... A horrific imagery for black powder to s just see as if your mind is playing tricks on you probably the side of somebody right after they got kill hauled would probably shake him up a bit okay all right frankie will, will then you know let that figure pass now it's it's a figure you can't can't put it with the other figure that he saw earlier did that figure do what i'm sorry because he did see something initially walk. Correct. So Correct. Are, is he say is he seeing the same figure walk across, or he does, can't tell? Can't you can't tell. Not with the because you got right on the success. You got like a ten at ten over ten or something, or nine versus ten. Is it something that's similar in ten, size? Ten versus ten. You can't tell with a ten versus ten. Then he will just carefully um, stealth back to the room with the others with the syringes Lee, okay you know trying to get um black powder him in front of black powder okay so you'll be back in the room and you will beat up to the last uh part of the conversation with tori go ahead yo we got the syringes man what are you frankie what are you doing with the syringes it's okay, Tori. We've we've got a plan. I thought you guys were going to do the plan. Well, we need we we didn't take the other stuff though. That's the thing. Uh, but you did. We just went to get the syringes. <laughs> now we can well, execute the plan. Now we can actually execute a plan. This is a good starting place for it, though. Fill me fill me in. What's the plan? Uh, the big guy with the machine that killed you. He's here. So, we're going to see if we can get him trapped somewhere. So we have a bit more working room. If that doesn't work, my flavor senshi ball worked. Huh? Oh, really? Just for a little bit, but it did, like a minute, but it did work. That's and I was able to me. at least disable his weed whacker for a little bit, so that might help you guys out. I might have a way to use that, but it might be more useful if I held on to it, if we all need to run for it. Just don't be sour about it. Hey. Just, come on, Sam, don't you know I'm the sweetest person you know? Absolutely. <laughs> don't I think a lot of time for fun and games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just too used to life or death situations, honestly. All right. I'm gonna go back in there and see if anything different happens. 
when you go in, listen for any like medical terms that they may mention and let me know what they are. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. And she'll so you're gonna turn around. Turn around, okay. go into the house. You'll turn around, go back into the house, and then everything goes black. And then everything suddenly, before everything suddenly becomes bright, you then smell that whiff of black licorice. And then your eyes suddenly see this brightness and it starts to adjust. And you're inside what appears to be some sort of office. You are still constrained to a chair right now. Um, And there seems to be another person, a relatively large person in white, like just hovering over you, just making sure that you're not like going crazy nuts. Um, You can see the doctor is at his desk and he's talking to both of your parents right now. And you realize that that black licorice that you've been smelling is actually the doctor's cologne. Um, And you're still kind of woozy, so you're not 100% coherent, but you can at least like hear what everybody's saying. And so, um, but you're still like kind of out of it. So I wouldn't say you'd be able to like respond to anything that's happening right this moment, but you can catch, a, just catch the end of their conversation. And you can hear the doctor say, she has a chance at a full recovery, but we need to proceed cautiously. If we're not careful, and then your mom interrupts, hold on doctor, are you saying that our little girl could be like she was before any of this happened? (sighs) The doctor then sits back and he says, Mrs. Barnes, you have to understand that for the last three years, she's been in an undifferentiated type of schizophrenia. And then your dad says, We know what her condition is, doctor. That's not what we're asking. Doctor, um, and then the doctor says, Carmen's delusions are multi-layered. She personifies herself as this sister she never had, this Tory. But that's only one level. She's created this intricate lattice work to support her primary delusion. In her mind, she's the central figure of this bizarre and strange world beyond imagination. She's surrounded herself with friends, most with their own special powers and abilities. And recently, it's gotten even more complicated. Now she believes she's traveling with these friends to whole other parallel universes. At least that's what she told me during our last session. All of which is as real to her as you and me. More so, unfortunately. Together, they face grand adventures, overblown conflicts against an assortment of monsters, both imaginary and rooted in actual myth. Every time we think we're getting through to her, more fanciful creatures appear. She mentions something about a giant soda monster recently and then you're at this point like you're you're more coherent and if you want to act or respond or do anything it's up to you if you want to act or respond um uh, um she'll probably call her mom and dad first mom dad oh carmen you're awake Sweetie, are you, are you feeling better? Is, are things making more sense to you again? I, I, I don't know. Doctor, you just mentioned the soda monster. Yes, Carmen, it's all right. They can't hurt you here. You're with your family. Sweetheart, your mom says, listen to what the doctor is saying. It's very important. Uh, well, what, what do I have to do to get better? Your mom goes to you and says, The first thing you have to understand, Carmen, 
is that you are not Tori. Tori doesn't exist. You don't have a sister. Say it. It'll help you believe it. Carmen, please, just say, I don't have a sister. I... I, I can't say that. <sighs> Sweetheart, you're our little girl. You will always be our little girl, and we miss you so much. Your mom and dad just want to take you home, finally, and, and take care of you, she says, and she kind of reaches out and just kind of tries to very, like, sweetly caress your hair, and it does feel very comforting. It feels very comforting, and it feels like, you know, like my poor mom, she just looks so heartbroken and so distraught, and she's so bloodshot, like, she hasn't slept in like three the last three years the doctor says we want to help you carmen but you need to meet us halfway there you need to want to be helped you need to want to be healed and it's not going to be easy you need to take it one step at a time if you really want to get rid of this nightmare for good you have to start ridding your mind of those things that supports your hallucinations your friends that you call them. <sighs> there are things in that world that you cling to. For your delusion, they're safe holds, but for your mind, they're traps. We have to break those down. I'm talking about those things that you want there. What keeps you going back there? You mean, you mean Star, Black Powder, Frankie, Sam? <laughs> Your dad will nod and say, Carmen, they're not really your friends. They're just tricks keeping you from getting healthy again. Think about it. The doctor said that you died already in that world by some weed whacker person. If that world was real, how are you still going back there then? How are you still alive there? It doesn't make any sense. Carmen, you have to do whatever it takes to convince yourself of that. You need to burn them from your mind. You need to let them go. So, out of character, Tori has a choice. What does she believe, ultimately? Does she believe that all of this is all in her head? And that she's in some sort of mental institution with a chance at normalcy again? And to be with your family? If so, you have to go back into that world again and burn all of the things that you're clinging to there or do you trust that this horror world is the reality and that this asylum is the illusion and if so well you have to decide for yourself what you want to do to to commit to that wow i think tori would truly believe that her friends are real. Um, oh, okay. Are real? Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of the monster stuff is real? Okay. Yes. I think, yeah, I don't think she would uh, want to go back to normalcy. I think, okay. you know, her friends still need help. And so she does not want to leave them behind and okay. burn them out of her memories. Then humor me. Okay. How many, how many tick marks do you have? I have three. You have three. Okay. For each tick mark, you're going to get a minus two penalty, minus six. I would like for you to make me a will save. <laughs> no, minus oh six. God. Oh, you got no, this. No, no. That's, where, that's where these tick marks come from. <laughs> okay. Um, Four versus 12. <laughs> 12 minus six is six, so you're fine. Oh, oh my okay, God. so you're fine. <laughs> So, you can continue down the path. You may continue down the path believing that your friends are real. So, at this point, you're going to come back out of the house again. So, you're in you're front of the TV set one more time. Um, and uh, you can converse and do whatever it is you want to do right now. Oh, yeah. How long have I been gone? <laughs> oh, you've been gone for a while. Yeah. Sorry. So, while this was happening... Um, are the rest of you just hanging out, or are you doing something? Yeah, Sam and Star are just talking in the room. Mm -hmm. We want to, Black Powder and I, we would actually go try to do this thing. So Okay, what are you going to do? 
We got the syringes filled. Um, want to go towards the opposite direction of where the figure walked. So down okay. the other hallway and see if we can find a place to like okay. set a trap for him. So you're going to make your way to the three-way fork, mm-hmm. the three-way, and when you arrive at the three-way fork, you're going to see that there are um, footprints, like m- slightly dirt, muddy footprints with very large shoes that are leading, it, they look fresh, that are leaving straight ahead down the center um, hallway. Which, if you remember, was the same hallway that that other figure that you saw, if it was a different figure, had gone as well. Um, so I'm just going to point that out. It's up to you whether you want to continue to the other wing that doesn't have the footprints, or if you want to go during the direction where the footprints were. Go towards the direction without footprints. Okay. You're going to move towards the direction without the footprints. And... Um, I would like for you and Black Powder to roll me a perception seeing roll. Another view, okay. So is there anything specific that you're trying to look for to set a trap? Like, I'm just curious. Yep. A um, decent sized room, like a smaller room with like a really solid door basically. Okay. Or a closet even kind of thing. Okay. Um, You're gonna stumble about, but and I'm gonna say that because you rolled, you didn't succeed, it's gonna take a bit longer to find what you're looking for. And that's when you hear a loud piercing scream coming from the center hallway. And it clearly sounds like Sue screaming down the center hallway, clearly. I would like for Sam and Star to also roll a hearing to see if they hear the scream. Okay. Star didn't hear it. Um, Joe also did not hear it. Uh, so, <laughs> what do you do? I just leave her. Not if she's here. I start heading in that direction. Yeah. Okay. We need to go. Okay. You're gonna make your way during, down that direction. Um, the hall gets. Um, just just continues down uh, straight forward and um, there's going to be a you'll hear the screams coming from an open door near the end of the hall that looks to be uh, the entrance to uh, that has a staircase that leads downstairs and you can see the on the sign above it says boiler room I point the sign out to Black Powder and it's like, this is going down to the boiler room. I don't know what that is. Um, it is a place where you will heat the water, typically of a building like this. So you've got to, it helps with the heating and air and it does all kinds of stuff for all of the utilities in the building. All right, so heat might be involved, got it. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. if Sue's down there, though. Roll another perception roll, please. We're really bad at this. Oh my god, I succeeded! Right. Black powder. <laughs> nice. On the ground, you see something shiny on the ground. It appears to be a white sphere with stars on it. On the ground. I grab it. You grab it, okay. And I start making my way downstairs. Good thing you guys saw that. <laughs> All right. You make your way down the stairs, and uh, you see uh, Sue running for her life. She looks very bad. Like, the last you saw her, she actually looked like she was in relatively good shape. She seems to have, like, um, these cuts like all over her body. Um, It looks like some of them have started to dry up a little bit, but she definitely looks like she's not in great shape at all. And she's limping, and on the 
on her shoulder, you see this fresh gash of something that seems to have sliced her, and she looks like she's in very, very bad uh, condition right now. She finally, um, unfortunately, just reached a, a dead end, and she doesn't have much of a way to escape, and the big creature with the weed whacker is quickly approaching her. Um, what do you do? I'll give you guys a chance to do uh, something. But I can see Sue. You can see Sue. She's in... She's behind... Not behind, but she, it's you all up at the end of the staircase. This dude and then Sue. Okay. Like, up against the wall, basically. I'm gonna call out to her and roll her her ball. Okay. The white ball. And I'm I gonna go that'll... and I'm gonna try and grab the guy from behind in, like, a headlock. Okay. So, um, all at the same time. Roll a dexterity roll to try to send the ball to her direction. Yes. Nice. You will send it to her direction, and then you will come up behind the guy. I will ask for you to roll a stealth. Um, because the guy is distracted, you can get a plus two. Uh, you can get a plus two bonus to this stealth roll. So that'll just be dex again. That'll be dex again, and then there'll be a plus two bonus. Okay. You're good. All right, so he will not notice you coming, and you will go ahead and grab him and try to hold him. So go ahead and roll me a strength roll. Because you succeed in your stealth roll, I will give you another plus two on your strength to give you an advantage with on. With that plus my uh, bonus for being towards roll, good. Yep. Okay. So you are able to grab a hold of him. He's very strong, but from adrenaline or something, you manage to hold him in place. Sue uh, desperately grabs onto the ball and then she holds it up into the air and then she shouts out, Umami Foom Flavor Power Change Up! Really really fast. And then, whoosh, big giant transformation. Um, she appears and then she um, will, uh, all of a sudden she has like a second wind and she seems like she's her confidence is gained again, and she's going to charge over at the guy. She's got her big giant hand, and she's going to say, um, uh, "Cast iron attack!" And then, bam, hits the guy or uh, hits the guy over the head. He stumbles back. Um, it doesn't seem to like knock him out, but it definitely seems to have dazed him significantly. And so you feel like you probably have. Um, Frankie, roll me a 1d3. Three rounds! You have three free rounds to do whatever you want before he breaks out of the daze. What do you do? Um, Frankie, seeing this scene, um, has the syringes in hand, um, with black powder still grabbing onto the big guy. Frankie will just kind of like very, um, very sexy, like, walk up to the big guy and be like, Hey, big boy, why don't you pick on someone your own size? Boom! And then he stabs the syringes, like, in his neck. Like, he's just okay. leading into it, like, mmm. Nice. <laughs> uh, roll me a first aid or medicine roll, or whatever is applicable. Frankie. Go ahead. We'll see. Come Give on, it Frankie. Give it a shot. All right. You attempt. Uh, and you try to jam it in, but I don't think you jam it in the right location that it would be effective. Um, but you still have two more rounds, and BP still has three rounds to do something. So, BP, do you want to do something this round? So, question about the guy. Which hand uh, does... Is he holding, like, the weed whacker with both hands, one hand, and does he both wear hands. anything on his face? Oh, yeah. He's got, he's got some sort of mask-looking thing. Since I'm holding on to him, I'm gonna try and rip that mask off. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, roll me uh, athletics or dex. Athletics or dex, actually. Ten. Okay. You will remove the mask, and behind the mask is this very deformed, like looking fa face, disfigured looking face. Uh, you don't recognize who this person is at all. But, for the viewers who are watching, this person's face looks like a disfigured version of Dr. Theodore. Dr. Theodore. Um, but his face does give off a very, 
like freaky looking, creepy looking. It, it, it's it's very scary looking. So I would like for both Frankie and Black Powder to roll me a will save to essentially protect you from fear, unless you have something that helps you against fear. I effects. have fearlessness. Then okay, so you're fine, I think, right? Um, or do you have a bonus? I'm. The thing is, I'm at like max level. Okay, so you're probably don't even have. Yeah. Oh, I just, I make a will save if I get a minus my level. Okay. So you'll probably be fine. Frankie, if you want to make a will save yeah. to save against fear, you're fine. Okay, so you're not going to be shook enough by it, but you definitely will be creeped out. Um, Sue is then going to, um, uh, she's going to put her pan away just for a second, and then she basically, um, takes out what looks like a knife block and then she just kind of uh, spins around and as she spins around this like shower of knives come out and start to like uh, stab into the uh, the creature which again you can see they penetrate and blood is pouring down him from the wounds but it doesn't really seem to slow him down um, at least not noticeably slow him down Two more rounds. What do you all do? So, like, are the syringes wasted then at this point? The first one is. You have two left. Yeah, but we know that, you know, without the third, like, it's... That's what Star thought. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do at this point. So I'm still holding on to the guy. Yeah, I'm going to basically... Because I'm, like, on his back. I'm going to bring my legs up and try and kick his arm so he drops the whack. Mm, Basically try and hyperextend his elbows. Okay. All right. He is very strong, so in order to disarm him like that, it does require a minus six penalty because he is super strong. Okay. He's nem. This guy's nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's not going to be an easy person to disarm, but try. Scout roll would work with that, huh? I don't think that'll work with that roll. I don't think so. Um, is Frankie going to do anything this? Yeah, I think Frankie's just gonna go to what he knows best, which is punch the hell out of him. So, <laughs> all right, uh, he just go after ahead. that mask comes off, Frankie's like, ah, and just goes wham right into that face. All right, go ahead and roll your roll to see if you hit. He's not gonna be able to dodge. Okay, roll for damage. Eight. Okay, eight damage. Doesn't it, it damaged him? It doesn't seem like he's really like cares at the moment that you damaged him, but you still damaged him. Um, and then um, Sue is going to spend the next round um, saying, I think we should make a break for it. And she's going to like run past him and start to go up the stairs. Uh, last round before he breaks out of his daze. Uh, I'm going to let go. Tell Frankie to get running and I'm going to activate my Sinchi Ball. <gasps> nice! What do you say, Black Powder? So what is it again? Uh, sweet sentient. Sweet flavor. Sweet flavor sweet power. Flavor power flow. Change up. Yeah. All right. So you say it. You go through your transformation, and for the next minute, you are the pink flavor sentient. Sweet flavor sentient. So you can decide what you want to do for the next minute. That is my action for the turn, though, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. is it? That'll be your. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you want to do something. Before he has a chance to go, you may. Oh. He is slower. He is slower, so you can go before he goes. Okay, I was basically gonna try to use my senshi thing. Yep. Um, because I'm sweet and sugar. Yep. I'm gonna yep. basically create a uh, sugar, like liquid sugar, to wrap around him and try and freeze it so it's hard with sugar that he can't move it. Yes. Yes. Um, you will be able to. You will be able to succeed in that. Um, and he's just going to be stuck. I will ask you to roll me a magic or IQ roll, just so I can see how long he'll be stuck in this trap. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. So you feel like you have more than enough for you to at least run away from the boiler room before he even has a chance to break out of it. <laughs> I want to steal the weapon. You can. He still he still has it because he wasn't disarmed. So if you still I want want to, to disarm him with yeah. All right, minus six penalty. Let's see if you can get this. Minus six penalty. Come on, Frankie. Come on, Frankie. Here's the strong one. Come on, Frankie. 
Did that work? Was it enough? Yes. Is that enough? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Frankie, you will grab a hold of the weed whacker. And yank um, that sucker out. Yank that sucker out. Uh, okay, you got the weed whacker. Um, Let's go. <laughs> you're gonna go with the weed whacker. It's still, it's still running. And actually, as you're going up the stairs, you'll hear uh, Sue scream in terror because all she hears is the weed whacker <laughs> coming from behind her. So she's just running. Can you turn that thing off, Frankie? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's like looking for like how to turn it off, and he figures it out. I'm sure. Um, okay, I'm, you'll probably be able to. Uh, I mean, no, no, it's a little complicated. Roll me a IQ use device or something. IQ. Yeah. Are you have anything that's technology based? I mean, I have computer operations. Okay. Okay. Um, Fourteen out of ten. Uh, you won't be able to turn it off yet. So. At least not until the scene is over. Fine. You won't be able to turn it off. Okay. Meanwhile, while all this craziness is happening, what are Sam and Star doing? So we're just chatting and waiting for Tori to come back. Okay. Um, while you're just hanging out and chatting, roll a hearing reception. Yay! Sam! I hear some work. Sam. You hear the jingling of bells again down the hallway towards where the three-way three-way path was. Okay, I'm going to keep it to myself for now. Okay, you don't do anything. No, and... and about that, uh, that crystal award ready to go. If- okay. All right. Um, you don't hear, you don't say anything, and eventually, Tori, you will come back after having that scene that we just had. Uh, something really weird is going on in there. They all think I have schizophrenia. What? They, mm-hmm. They they think I'm sick in the head, and they think I'm making all of you guys up. Everywhere we've been so far, finding Victor. Saving you from being kidnapped. <laughs> My doctor said this never happened, but I mean, I see you guys as clear as day. <laughs> like, you guys have to be real. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way what they're saying is true. So I'm pretty sure it's them that has schizophrenia or something. Tori, I want to just check. I've got psychology as one of my skills. <laughs> I want to see if. Um, and when she's mentioning that, if it, um, if I can deduce whether she's like displayed any, you know, like split personality or, um, you know, anything like that in the past. Okay. 10 versus 18. So you're asking if she has ever had that in the past since you've met her? Yeah. If she's like, put on any indications for split personality. I wouldn't say since you've met her. I wouldn't say so. I don't think. Yeah. So no. Yeah. So I'm just going to say grand delusions are extremely rare. Less than 1% of any population can ever feel it. Star is not living a life that you've imagined prior to you meeting him. Neither have I, neither has Frankie, neither has Black Power. My existence didn't start when I met you, so you're fine. It's some type of a temptation thing, just trying to get you into the clutches of this Maldivine Manor. So you're good, Tori, you're good. We just gotta figure out a way to get you out of there and back here with us. Tori, when you were in there, they wanted you to let go of Tori as Carmen? Not just Tori. They want me to let go of everything. Everything we've all been through together. All of it. To go back to some sense of 
I don't know, to go back home. Because I, I guess I'm at this, they think I'm at this hospital having these delusions. Okay, I'm gonna agree with Sam on this one. It is a temptation. Remember when I told you about the imps and their sweets? It's kind of like that. They're luring you with something that you want, you know, because you want peace and you want to be with your sister. So it's a delusion to trick you that you are your sister. So you end up giving up your ghost. Does that make any sense? As much as any of this makes sense. Right. So I'm going to say it's safe to assume that everything in that house is some type of hallucination. And whatever Sam said, tying with it. Well, that doesn't bring us any closer to getting out of here. It doesn't, but there must be something they're telling you. Have you tried resisting anything? Oh, well, my mom wanted me to come back home. And I mean, I am tempted. It felt nice. It felt warm and comforting. And maybe it would give me some sense of peace, but I don't think I could pretend that you guys don't exist. You know what I mean? Right. I think that's the illusion, Tori. It's to make you think this is all fake. Yeah. And so if how you do I beat it? It's a part of the mind, Tori. Your will has to be strong enough to beat whatever hallucination they're trying to pass off. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to let him do it. Tori, when you first went into the house, did you hear bells? The dollhouse? No. Before you met us, when you met, went into the house and the old lady told you to poke the pin in the doll, did you hear bells? Yeah, a few times, and it ended up being this little gesture doll that Madame Maldivere called Curious. Huh? Why, why, why do you ask about bells? Have you, have you heard something? Like the bells? Yeah, a little while ago, we heard bells that led us here to you. Did you follow the bells when you first went in the house, or did you stay away from them? Oh, I followed the bells, of course. Well, I just heard some bells coming from down the hall. So when Black Powder and Frankie get back, a couple of us will go check on that. Maybe following that will lead us to you. Maybe. The last time I followed those bells, it led me to Madame Maldivere. So just be cautious. Sam, I think you're on to something, and I just want to say this now before anything else happens. I'm sorry I insulted your IQ with the lack of your glasses. That was really low of me, bro, and I'm so sorry. I appreciate the apology, but you don't really need to apologize. It's uh, pretty common for people who wear glasses to really be the brunt of any type of discrimination. In fact, about 36% of glass wearers suffer some type of humiliation just because of the fact that they have impaired vision. Facts, boys and girls, out of character. Yeah, <laughs> so true. <laughs> you know, those numbers made my head hurt, but can I also tell you something else? And this is probably like the worst time to say anything about this, but I feel if I don't say it now, I'll never have this moment. This is going to sound really weird, but I think Sapphire has a crush on you, and it's been making me weird because I think Sapphire is my predominant personality right now, so... Yeah. Does that help in any way, shape, or form? Have you been getting a vibe from me? Well, not here. I can't see much. Damn. 
Oh, well. I mean, at least I tried, right, Tori? Uh... uh hello? <laughs> Can we... <laughs> It'll be at this moment that I would like for the three of you to roll me a. Oh. 